thank you all for uh, your stamina for hanging around. I know I'm struggling. All right, so I'm, uh, as mentioned, I'm Scott Needham. I'm the CEO of Leading Technology Group. Uh, we're an investment company that's uh, come from a history in the IT space. Um, over the last three years, we've been investing in the life of the sciences space. Um, in particular, we have a couple of businesses selling um, biological reagents for research. Um, but in January, we made the decision to focus specifically on sense style opportunities. I've been following Aubrey's work for a much longer than not come to a point where I could um, act on it. And we, in particular, we made the decision to focus on vascular aging. I just want to run you through the prioritisation approach that we used to make that decision. So ideally with sense in view, and I think following up from some other talks, we would like to prioritise aging, damage and senescence. Um, but unfortunately, while there are measures, there's no standardised <coughs> measures and across the board measures. So unfortunately, we've had to prioritise diseases and causes of death which there is a lot of data and we're lucky to have some of the leading population health scientists in Australia. And we've used their <coughs> data today. So briefly I'll just discover, um, discuss the approach we used to develop that prioritisation and some of the results just at a very high level. Alright, so um, this is the characteristic uh, all-cause mortality death curve. Um, it gives the age-specific death rate uh, for each age through life and it's on a log scale um, for all causes of death. And uh, if I had time, I'd provide a brief introduction to this. <coughs> but I just want to point out the uh, straight part of the curve here, which uh, a few hundred years ago, uh, Gomp Hertz noted, um, shows the very constant exponential growth in uh, mortality. <coughs> and it rises by about 11% per annum. Uh, other work in between then um, showed that while the all-cause curve has a very characteristic shape, Individual diseases have very different rates of uh, growth in mortality, and some of them are exponential, some of them are very strange curves. Further, um, more recent work by Horiuchi and Finchell showed that um, even within specific diseases over the human lifespan, there's quite um, dramatic uh, accelerations and decelerations, showing here is decelerations and here is accelerations. And they hypothesised that um, this would be expected based on evolutionary theory um, that before and after um, reproductive age that we would see different uh, chronic processes at work. So a lot of information here, but very briefly, their, um, their findings were that diseases that accelerate in old life, um, old age, include dementia, several infections, uh, accidental injuries primarily around frail musculoskeletal system, uh, diseases that are ge um, digestive, genital and urinary systems. And diseases that decelerate in old age include primarily lifestyle diseases um, and uh, disease, uh, diseases associated with uh, disease history or uh, health history and genetic factors. And they're diseases that might accelerate early in life but then decelerate in old life. And at a very high level and very briefly, uh, their summary interpretation was that Diseases that accelerate in old life are dominated by uh, the underlying senescent processes from normal metabolism. And the diseases that accelerate, uh, uh, decelerate in old life are dominated by individual specific uh, risk factors. And so with this in mind, um, our prioritisation process, we try to look to overweight diseases that accelerate in old life, um, in old age, and underweight diseases that decelerate in old age, aiming to look for those underlying senescent processes. Um, so after, after that research, it almost seemed like there should be an obvious answer on how to do it. Um, lots of detail, lots of looking at other papers, but we considered one option, which was to rank diseases by their late life um, mortality growth rate. Growth rate. Uh, unfortunately, that doesn't work because some diseases accelerate very fast in old life, um, like, for example, falls. Um, but they come from a very low level. Um, the other option we considered was to adjust uh, mortality based on the number of deaths that are associated with risk factors. Um, the data is much better on this now, but unfortunately it's still relatively limited and it doesn't include data on uh, health uh, disease history, or sorry, health history, uh, medical history, and it doesn't include genetic factors, or at least not at a significant level. So in the end we took a very simple approach to prioritising uh, age-related disease. And simple is nice, it, it's hard to hide bias in simplicity. Um, and the first one was to prioritise diseases by the percentage of deaths they cause to those over the age of 60 
representing post-reproductive age. And the second one was to prioritise diseases by the percentages of deaths they caused for those over the age of 85. And this was based on further work by Horiuchi that showed that there's a significant difference between the um, rate of mortality growth between the old and the oldest old. And we also looked at um, DALIs, which is Disability Adjusted Life Years, a measure of, uh, measure of uh, disability or disease burden. And the results were very similar for the two. Unfortunately, I don't have time to discuss the DALI results today, but there were some interesting findings, but largely they are aligned with the mortality data. So now just into some examples of uh, what the, uh, the rankings say. Um, I've given a, a visual interpretation of the data here. Um, on, the, on the left here, the y-axis shows the percentage of deaths uh, for each of the ranking methods. And the first point shows, based on um, all, uh, the whole population, all ages, the second shows um, the percentage for those over the age of 60 and the third for those over the age of 85. So I just want to point out this is a linear scale. It's uh, uh, showing how it changes between the three. Ah, sorry. So, yeah, so there's some examples here I've given, but I think largely they're well known. The only ones that were maybe a bit interesting I found were the digestive and genital urinary, which I hadn't maybe understood how important they were. Uh, the second one here shows some diseases that are steady and decreasing in ranking uh, through the three ranking methods. You can see the top three are associated with um, risk factors. And the bottom one here is an example I've included of diseases that are coming to the ca category of uh, mental disorders and uh, accidents or injuries, um, excluding falls. And these, these categories drop dramatically for those over the age of 60 and to almost zero for those over the age of 85 as a percentage of deaths. And here's cancer. This was a bit of a surprise for me. Um, as you can see, uh, cancer remains the second largest uh, cause of death as a category. Um, but you can see that it drops um, in ranking for those over the age of 60 and then quite dramatically for those over the age of 85. Um, I'm not an expert in this area, but um, from the reading I've done, there's a lot of research on this drop. Uh, it appears to be associated with the fact that cancer's virulence is dramatically reduced in a senescent body. Here's just a couple of um, examples of cancers, individual cancers that are included in that category. The top two are diseases that stay quite steady in the rankings, but uh, still dis decrease. And the bottom two are those that decrease in both of those age ranges. But all cancers, every one, decreases for those over the age of 85 as a percentage. And uh, this one's the, the elephant in the room, uh, cardiovascular disease. As you can see, cardiovascular disease is a category um, exceeds in all three categories uh, the category of all other diseases excluding cancer. So that's over 100 causes of death um, and diseases. Um, and you can also see that it grows quite strongly for those over the age of 60 and then represents over 50% of deaths for those over the age of 85. And within that um, are two particular diseases, just one, uh, two of about 150, uh, ischemic heart disease and stroke, which other people have shown slides on this data. But I was shocked by how large a percentage just those two have. Um, almost the majority of cardiovascular is included in those two, and they exceed uh, all other diseases combined in most cases for the most of those rankings. And I think the key thing for us is looking into those two diseases. I've grouped them together because they're both predominantly or almost completely associated with vascular aging. And that led to our uh, decision to focus on vascular aging as an area of, uh, area of investment. Um, on top of those, there are some other diseases uh, like uh, dementia and um, other blood barrier and filter diseases that have a heavy uh, vascular component as well, vascular aging component. I haven't included them in a vascular category because um, I don't have, feel like I'm confident enough on the research at this point, but certainly I feel that vascular just by itself would be a much larger category. And finally, I just wanted to leave you uh, with a slide sort of, you know, I actually assumed that research would be aligned with the existing World Health Organization priorities. Uh, this shows the mortality just for those two diseases, ischemic heart disease and stroke, is 33%, same as the previous slide, as it showed. Uh, using DALIs, it's quite a similar number, around 25%. And as you can see here, the NH funding um, is only 6%, um, which I was quite surprised by. And you might say maybe it's just these two diseases, they're special. Um, but it's actually quite across the board. Only 33% of uh, research funding is explained by the actual mortality data and disability data. 
Um, so we have ended up uh, with this. I see this is actually quite a disappointing sign that maybe no one will actually use my priorities. Uh, if no one's using their who priorities, I'm pretty sure they won't use mine. Uh, but I, we also see it as a fantastic, fantastic opportunity for the future. Thank you.